right, welcome everyone. Chris Petri here. Thanks so much for coming by. It's great to have you here. Welcome everyone. And if it's your first time here, I'm really thankful that you're uh, stopping by and working with us here on our watercolor uh, extreme beginner series videos. This is for actually people, artists, we're fellow artists here. If you're just beginning, this is the perfect video. You're at the right place at the right time. Extreme beginners videos are really when you're just starting out, you need some, uh, really good, uh, tutorials that can kind of walk you through the process and the methods and the techniques of watercolor, give you the fundamentals. You don't need to learn all about the details all up front, all the f fine uh, details of watercolor in the beginning. You just need the fundamentals and that's what we're going to cover here, the fundamentals. And we're also going to cover a few extra things too you can put to use for your watercolors and uh, let's get started. So again, we're just going to go over how to use plastic film, which is called Duralar. I'll color everything. I will, uh, in just a few seconds, I'll give you the name of the actual uh, plastic film that we use, but you take this film, you make a crosshair, you put it on your subject matter. So here we're using our iPhone. We're, I'm using my iPhone to create a painting. We're going to use, uh, you can use your laptop, you can use your home computer, you can use a TV set, you can use anything you want, pictures, photographs, whatever it is. You take your crosshairs, you tape it down to your phone, you have your crosshairs like so. Then you draw those same crosshairs on your paper, on your uh, watercolor paper, and then you draw and paint with this in mind, and you become much more um, locked into exactly where all of your subject matter, matter needs to be. So here you can see I got my laptop perfectly laid out on my paper because we use this crosshairs here, which is four sections, one, two, three, and four. And we do the same thing with our pencil on our paper. So it's a really fun way to use the crosshairs. You can use more, we're gonna cover all the details of this. And then of course, we're gonna use our palette, all of our gorgeous paints and washes. We're gonna show you how you're gonna create all your light washes and then your darker washes over top. We're gonna to use the glazing technique. Again, that's another technique we're gonna use here. You're gonna learn all about the glazing technique in this video. So you're gonna learn myriads of information here. I'm hoping uh, you'll stick with us here. Have fun, join along, and we'll get started with the uh, first part of our video, which covers the technique of using plastic um, Duralar film to create some hatching so that you can actually transfer that onto your paper and get your composition just the way you want it on your paper. Okay, we'll be right back. All right, so we're uh, gonna continue on here. We just saw the finished painting. And we just talked a little bit about our method uh, and, and uh, techniques we're going to use in this video. Something a little different. Um, I like to mention that um, you can always find ways to make your paintings uh, and your drawings more simple to um, get onto your paper and uh, um, paint. So this is what I'm hoping. I've covered this before, I think maybe once or twice, even maybe three or four times on my channel over the last five years. I've probably did this... Um, type of method and technique uh, numerous times, but you know, not, not that many times. I don't do it all the time. It's a little more time consuming, but it, it really is tremendously helpful. So I'm hoping you will try this. Uh, many of you, I think, oh, I wish should say some of you have tried this and you probably already are using this now in your, um, in your uh, work and your drawings and your paintings. And I'm really happy that you're doing that. But for some of you that might not have, uh, have tried this yet, I'm hoping you're going to try it. And this is an extreme beginners video too. So I don't think I've ever worked with this method um, with the Extreme Beginners um, videos uh, series. So um, let's try it out. I think you're really going to have good success with this. So basically the fundamental idea here is using plastic film, which is called Dural Duralar. It's basically a very, very, you know, a decent thickness film. It's almost like the plastic that, that's on packaging that you purchase when you're buying products or maybe um, baked goods, you know, sometimes there'll be a baked goods box where it has like a, um, a, a, a box and then it has like a window, a clear plastic film window where you can see the baked goods in there, cookies, um, you know, um, treats and, uh, cupcakes and cakes and things like that. So that's what this is. It's basically the same type of plastic, except this is called, uh, Duralar in case you want to pick something up like this. It's really good. It's called Duralar and, uh, it's 0 0.004, uh, film or uh, sheets of plastic and they come in like a like a pad or a, you know a pad of sheets of clear plastic and they're uh, you can get all different sizes 
I have a 14 by 17 pad of Duralar. Um, you can buy them very large. Uh, if you want to do a larger painting, bigger than 14 inches by 17 inches, and you want to use a plastic film for your creative um, uh, processes as you're working with your artwork, that's great. So let, I'm just going to kind of cover something that you can do with Duralar. It's really great. Um, you can use, it's a lot of uses. You can apply it in all kinds of different ways. If you have it with you and you're using it and you try it out with this type of exercise, I think you'll find more ways to use it. There's a lot of different ways you use it. I use it in a lot of different ways. I won't cover all those right now. I'll just cover what we're doing on this video on how I use it. But basically again, it's Dural R that's the brand. You can probably find other things like this, but it's 0 0.004 thickness. That's the, the plastic, the, the film it's, that's the thickness. That's what you want. You want something of a decent weight and something that you can clear off um, the uh, magic marker when you're done using your Sharpie markers. I use red Sharpie marker on this one here, this plastic film. And then when we're done here, I'll show you how easy it is. You can just clean it right off and then you'll be ready for your next project um, with it. So this is multi-uses. You know, you can, it'll last you forever. Actually, if you buy one, one pad of this Duralar, you'll, it'll be last you a lifetime. So basically it's a clear film and you can use it to actually um, help you again with your compositions, your drawing, your painting process. <clears throat> so what I did here is I just took a small piece of it that I cut off of a, uh, a 14 by 17 sheet. And then I, I, I used scotch tape and just taped it to the top of my phone. And then I took a photograph that I wanted to use of a lighthouse. And I said, well, how can I make it easier to figure out where I'm going to put my lighthouse on my paper? And this is the perfect way you can do it. And you can use this for any painting, anything. It, it's just ha so happens to be I'm doing the lighthouse, but it could be a painting of a barn or a house or a seascape or a landscape or anything like that. Um, flowers probably would work really well with, with still life, like um, flower arrangements and things like that. But in any case, what, what, I, what I did was I just made a perfect cross on my paper, on my... Uh, Duralar film, a perfect cross like this with red magic marker. I used a ruler first and I just made a perfect cross uh, to the side. Then I took it and I taped it onto my phone right where I wanted the vertical line to be, which is right here. So that's where I wanted my vertical line to be. This is the center of my paper. That red um, line will be the center of our paper here. So basically now what we can do is we can take a super light line and just make a light sketch line across our paper like that. And then we can do another uh, sketch line across this way, halfway across like that. So now we've duplicated the cross here and that's how we can actually pretty much get all of our information into this rectangle here perfectly because we have this to give us our waypoints for everything. You know how I'm always doing hash marks on my paper. I'm always doing hash marks on my outer taped off border. I usually use a taped border like that. So you can see I'm doing my cross crosshairs here like this, just like that. Now, when you do that light pencil line across here, I didn't do it dark because I really don't need to. You can kind of get the idea that I'm just using a light pencil line and just doing a cross right across the whole rectangle. Now what I did is I took the, that same principle and said, all right, now I'm going to do the crosshairs here. Same thing, except um, I want my lighthouse to be just to the left of the center of the painting. So I don't want my lighthouse exactly center of the painting. I want it to the left, just a touch. And that's how you achieve that. You make an exact perfect center line here like this. Then you do the same thing on your painting. And then now you can use this crosshairs here, your cross hatching to get all the other information. And if you look at this here, you can kind of see right away, we can kind of say, wow, check this out. We got the lighthouse here that sits right on the left side of this, this line here. And then look at our uh, rocks. We have a island. This, this lighthouse is basically on an island. And those rocks that the lighthouse is sitting on top of the uh, island, basically, it's sitting right in the bottom of that island is right in the center of this, uh, let's say, square. So now you're seeing things in kind of blocks. 
And always remember, you can add more lines to your, um, your plastic film. If you have a very complicated painting, let's say a, a city scene where you have all kinds of buildings and cars or whatever you want to draw, if you're doing like a, like a really kind of more complex composition like a city scene or maybe even like a farm scene with all different kinds of things like barns and cows and horses and all these other things, you could add more squares or more cubes into your, onto your plastic film so that when you draw the same exact, so all you're doing is you're duplicating, you're taking whatever format you have here on your plastic film, you're taking that same format and putting it on your paper with light uh, sketch lines. And a lot of uh, really like, um, a lot of uh, very serious oil painters, like you know, ser uh, famous professional uh, oil painters and acrylic painters, as well as watercolor artists pr probably use this a lot, quite a bit. They might not talk about it a lot, but this is a very, very, like, this would be something that you might not, you might not see a lot on videos or on, in books and things like that. But a lot of people use this format of just creating cubes or blocks. And you need, if you need to, you can make more, you can make your blocks more. You could put like six or eight blocks. Here we have four. You could make eight if you wanted to, or even 16 or, or blocks if you needed to if it was a more complex scene and you really wanted to get it but you can kind of see how just by doing these four cubes or these four squares we already can locate our drawing so let's do i'm going to do my drawing i'm not going to take forever to do this let's just do a quick the basic idea is showing you the the cubes and how you can actually use these squares to get a more precise drawing when you're doing your drawings because i know a lot of times uh, I still struggle sometimes when I'm drawing, and when I first started watercolor, I definitely struggled a lot with drawing skills and laying out things and getting things accurate. So I think, again, this will go a long way for you. So let's start. Um, again, we said, all right, the lighthouse is going to be on this side of the this plumb line here, which is this line here. And then we said that the island, this rock... All these rocks in this island formation here, that's centered on these bottom two squares or cubes, let's call them. So let's try it out. Now let's get our lighthouse going. And then we could say, all right, our rocks, our rocks are about halfway like this. I apologize for the barking dog. It sounds like something is perturbing the dog next door, my neighbor's dog. Um, it might be like another uh, animal that's out, like a cat or another dog. And they're just along the fence there. Everything's fenced in over here by my house, by the neighbors. So it must be taunting the dog next door. He's usually very mellow and doesn't bark at all. Once, only once in a while he barks. Now he's barking incessantly, which I think something is perturbing him. But I know you have pets, many of you, and you probably deal with this all the time. But... So in any case, here we're doing our rock island. We're going to try to focus and forget about the barking. And then uh, the island comes across here like so. Like that. Pretty good. And then we have the reflection of the lighthouse here. And then over here, we can see that the... Um, there's a, uh, basically a roof on the bottom of the lighthouse that goes across about right there. So we can put that roof in because we see it's right there. We could kind of put that roof in like that. Like that. And then the lighthouse starts about right on that center line, that red line there that we drew in on our plastic film. And then the lighthouse has got a little bit of a lean to it. Let's not worry about that. It kind of looks good. If it's leaning a little bit, I don't think it would look great if it's perfectly straight. And that's about where the lighthouse stops. The lighthouse here where the um, catwalk is up here, where there's a steel platform that wraps around the whole lighthouse, that's about halfway up. So right away we're starting to see that you can use your, um, again, your squares and your lines to help you. So you would say, okay, wow, halfway up this cube here. So the top left cube right here, like this, this top left cube, 
halfway up that cube is where that catwalk right there, that steel platform that goes around the top of the lighthouse, that's where that starts, about halfway up. So here's about halfway point. And then you can just go across and get the catwalk in there. Like that. And then uh, this is the other side of the lighthouse that goes up on a sort of a conical shape. It's not quite... I'll just erase a little bit. I'll slim the lighthouse down. Maybe I'll go over here and then slim this down a little bit too. Um, so yeah, let's do that. Let's kind of like that. That's much better. I guess what I'm saying is the lighthouse definitely has like a the, the lighthouse has pitch angle going upwards like this, almost like it's a, it's like a, um, it's like a cylinder basically. So you can imagine this is sort of like a um, you could envision this as like a thimble. This could be like a thimble, uh, that, that, that tiny kind of shape. It's a, a, like a cylinder shape, a, a thimble or like a tube of paper, like a paper towel tube. It's basically a tube shape, a round spherical tube. And it's going up like this, but it's also tapering in just a little bit, not quite straight like a tube would be, like a, for a paper towel tube, but in like this. So we just have to We'll just account for that. A little bit of tapering, not much though. Just a little bit, and then you have that. Then we have the catwalk, and that just juts out a little bit like so. Like that. And then you, you sometimes you erase a little bit just to, as you're working. So we erase a little bit here. And then we just make the other... We make the um, railings going around the the top of the uh, catwalk here. Those are the railings. And then it steps in the uh, lighthouse here for the, the actual light itself. There's the top of the light of the lighthouse and that's kind of steps in a little bit. You can kind of see it goes in a little bit on each side. You kind of have to feel that out. See how, you know, take your time with it. Kind of look and say, oh, what does that look like? Well, it looks like about maybe... Um, a little bit more than a third of the top of the the lighthouse. So if this is thirds, it's a little bit larger than a third. So you might have like a quarter, a quarter, and then one half thickness here. So you're kind of stepping in about a quarter of the way on each side, and then you have another halfway for the center of this. And then we'll do our other. We have another catwalk up here around where the light is itself, the actual glass and the um, the light of the lighthouse. And then there's a, an oval up there, so you can make an oval for the underside of the top cone of the roof, like that. And then there's a um, there's an antenna up at the top, and then there's maybe a lightning rod up here, like that. And then there's the light in the center of the lighthouse, like that. And I think we're pretty good. And then we're just going to have this railing up here with a center member there. So I'm just doing my railings, a little bit of detail to the railings. These are the um, supports for the underside of that walkway on the top of the lighthouse, like so. And then there's the same thing up here. There's smaller supports for the underside of that walkway up top. And we notice that there's a little bit of a a little bit of an arch or a little bit of a um, radius to these lines up here at the top of the lighthouse where these catwalks are, the platforms. So they're all kind of like arcing, kind of like this. I, I think I have some uh, napkins here, but things are kind of like arcing like this at the top of the lighthouse.
like this. Things are kind of the walkways and then the railings. The railings kind of arch like this. Just to kind of you want to have a little bit of arch to it, a little bit of a, a radius to it. Like we wouldn't want to make it like straight like that, the railings. You could do it that way though too, that's all right. Might look good actually, you know. Experiment, that's what I say. Try experimenting, <laughs> don't worry about it. If you can get a little bit of the roundness to that or, or the, like that radius feel, that's better. But if you get it straight across too, that like again, probably looks good. Down below here on the bottom, it's a little bit more straight. So you can imagine the higher up it is, the more you're going to see the roundness of it. And so here we have the uh, we have the um, we have the the roof that goes around the lighthouse and the railings and there's the doorway for the lighthouse over here like that we're not going to get too much detail going here um, we just might make a quick little few there might be a, um, a hoist over here for boats so we'll just make a hoist over here like that Maybe we'll make a flagpole here. And you can kind of see I'm using my, again, my lines. There's the red line. I did my flagpole up here and then the flag over here. Just like that. The hoist for the boats over here. Same thing there. So you can kind of see we're using our crosshairs here to kind of get everything all laid out. And we've done it. We've actually gotten our drawing really, really accurate to what our photograph is or your painting. You might be working from a painting from another book, or you might be using a photograph from the internet, or you might be using another um, something from a TV show and you, you, you hit pause and then you take your... Um, you know, you take your picture of it. You can take pictures off your TV. I don't know if anyone remembers me saying that. I did say that a few times maybe, but I do this. If you take pictures, you can take pictures from your TV set with your phone if you'd like to. That really works well. Or again, you can do screenshots or screen captures from your laptops. If you find pictures on your on the internet and you want to use your laptop, you just, if you don't know how to do a screen capture or a screenshot on your laptop, just look it up online on YouTube. Just type into YouTube how to do a screenshot. And you can find out how to do that for your laptop or your phone. And um, and you can save your picture. And then once you save your picture, again, you're just taking your plastic acetate or your plastic Duralar film, putting it over the top, taping it down with some scotch tape on your picture or your phone or your computer screen, whatever you have that you're working from. And then you just draw your hash marks. We drew our hash mark perfectly centered, crosshairs, equal distance, halfway across, halfway down or halfway up we could call that and then from there we wanted to make our lighthouse to the left of the halfway point vertically so there we captured that perfect we have the lighthouse just to the left of center in our rectangle we captured our rocky um uh, island here by easily just looking at this and saying hey oh wow look at that the, the, the island here with all the rocks is right in the center of this square down here on the left, right side. There we have it. And then this over here too is all in the center over here. And then our flagpole, that comes up and that's... The flag is resting right on the uh, vertical line, uh, horizontal line we drew across here, this red line across here. So we have that. So if you, if you can just imagine, you're just taking the information you're looking at here and you're able to set it perfectly right in place on your um, your rectangle on your paper so that it all fits perfectly right inside your rectangle so you don't have to worry about starting your lighthouse drawing it and next thing you know your lighthouse is running off the paper that won't happen if you're using this type of method this can really again 
help a lot. And I'm hoping you're going to let me know in the comments section. Please let me know if this makes sense to you. Um, if you need more um, ideas on this, we can do more videos like this. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section. And also, too, again, let me know if you've tried this in the past and said, yeah, tell me, say, Chris, oh, yeah, I did this the, a year ago when you showed this video about it and I did it and it works great. You know, give me some feedback. Let all the people in the comment section know how it worked for you. Many people look at the comments in the comment section and it'll help them, too, a lot. You know, we're all here to help each other as artists. Let's do it. Let's work together, help each other out. And again, if you have valuable um, experience with this where you've been doing this for a while or you've been using it a long time, uh, whatever, it's great. You can let us know in the comment section. And uh, let's get started with the painting, though, because we're ready to paint, basically. We have all the information here now on our paper, and now we're ready to go in and paint. And we feel much more confident about our painting now because we know we're going to go in. We, we created our drawing with a really good scale and a really good design where we were following something that we could really trust in. We can trust this format of using crosshairs and we can do more uh, grid. This is like a grid basically. So we can add more lines to this grid if we need to, if it's more a, a more complex uh, painting. Does that make sense? So if there's a lot more things in your painting and you need to have more lines, you would just add to your grid, add more lines to it. The only thing is you're always going to draw the same grid that you have on your plastic and over the top of your subject matter, your painting, you're going to do that same grid the same way on your paper. So you're going to follow what's here and transfer it down here. So basically it's a matter of transferring what you're seeing here down onto your paper. And again, you're transferring your lines first and foremost the same way onto your paper, the way you want it to rest on your paper, if that makes sense. So, but you have to try it out a few times, get used to it, but you'll, it'll all make sense to you once you start using it and trying it out. But the simplest ways to try it out with the crosshairs, just the two lines, vertical line, horizontal line, right down the center. Then from there, you try that first, then you can adjust the lines. You can make the lines anywhere you want, actually. But the main thing is you're following what's up here and then transferring it down here. And you're using these lines to locate all the information down here. So you're saying, where is that lighthouse? Oh, oh, I see. This lighthouse is actually right to the left of this first line that we put down here like this. And then we say, bam, there it is. And then, oh, I see. This, this, this island here that the uh, lighthouse is sitting on. Oh, I get it. That island is right in the center of these two bottom squares. And then we put the island right on these two bottom squares in the center, the center of those squares this way. And that's how it works. Okay, let's start painting in just a second. All right, so we're getting started again, and uh, let's get our colors mixed in our palette. This is an you know, Extreme Beginners palette, as we say, uh, the Prang Oval 16 palette. Um, you can find this palette easily on uh, Amazon, uh, online, at your art stores, at big box stores uh, that uh, sell uh, hobbies and crafts and things like that. You'll usually be able to find this palette. It's really readily available in most places, but of course on Amazon it's, it's simple to find. It's right there. You just type in um, uh, Prang Oval 16 watercolor paint set. And uh, you'll find it there. It's that simple. And they're very uh, inexpensive. They're only like maybe 8 to $10, I think, is, is this this set actually is. So if you're just starting out with watercolors and if it's your first time here, welcome. Thanks so much for coming by. Uh, I'm really so excited that you're here uh, painting with us. We're having a fun time. We're learning about the basics and fundamentals of watercolor. Uh, each time I create a video, I always try to incorporate the basics and fundamentals of watercolor, but then also bring in some added uh, details and information too. For those of you that have been working along with us, especially on the Extreme Beginner series, I always try to put in more information in all my videos, especially the fundamentals I cover, but then I also go into more of the complex things so that you can keep gaining more information and knowledge, because that's what you need. You need knowledge, knowledge is power, and you're gonna have much better watercolors if you're learning, watching, joining along week after week with us here. So keep and stay tuned. If you wanna hit the subscribe button below on the right-hand side, you hit subscribe. 
and you just click on the notifications bell, uh, the top bell, which is all notifications. This way, whenever we create a new video, you'll know about it and you'll be able to just jump along, watch it. If you're too busy and you can't actually pick up the, you know, brushes and the paints and everything, you just watch the video for, uh, for some time, 15, 20 minutes, whatever you can do. I know everyone's busy here. A lot of people are very busy. You can't always fit in um, practice time every every minute so um but just i understand that you just learn as much as you can absorb be like a sponge absorb as much as you can the more you're watching the more you're learning you're hearing the words the terms you're seeing the techniques of, you know as we paint along here so we'll get started again the first thing we'll do is we'll just to make our life easy um we're going to just kind of try to get our colors mixed in our palette first ahead of time so that we're not scratching our heads saying to ourselves, oh, what color do I kind of find next on my palette? Well, let's kind of navigate around that idea and just say, let's get all the colors we need right away, right in the beginning onto our palette. And then when we go in and start painting, we have our colors all worked out and it's all there. And then you don't have to worry too much. Um, yes, sometimes you'll have to go in and maybe add a few of the colors you've already put into your palette, but you'll be able to see which ones you kind of need a little more of, and it'll be easy to find. And trust me, this really works great. If you just kind of, we, we do our colors first in our palette, get them on there on the palette in your um, pans, on the pan section of your palette. And then um, you'll be, we'll have a lot more easier of a time doing this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, all right, let's do this the glazing technique style. We talk about this all the time on my channel. Uh, I go on, I go, you know, I usually try to mention this, at least on all my videos, I try to mention what kind of technique I'm using here. This is the glazing technique. Basically, it's very simple. Glazing technique, you're going to do a light wash over the whole painting first with your light washes of color, very, very light washes, and then you let that dry 100%. Then you come back in and you do your darker washes over the top, and you can kind of see how that would be kind of really nice for this type of painting because you have a lot of light paper here, a lot of white, you know, very, very light washes here. And then uh, you have a fair amount of dark washes on top of here, but much more light. You can kind of see, right, there's a lot more lighter washes in this. So let's get that going first and let's just get the whole bit of light washes on the whole paper again first. You can go over the whole sheet of paper. You don't have to worry. Then you let that dry 100%. You can use a blow dryer to speed up the process. And then we'll do those darker washes over the top. Okay, so now let's talk about colors. We're just gonna get some uh, sky colors, blue. This is kind of like a French ultramarine blue there or like a cobalt blue. And again, remember these first washes are light. So we're not gonna use a lot of thick paint. We're just gonna get the color in there. We're gonna use some of this blue which is kind of like a cerulean blue. We're going to add some orange to that. And some orange to this too. Just a touch of that. Orange. We'll use some more orange up here. And yellow. And again, these are light washes in the beginning, so don't feel like you, ha you don't have to really use much paint. Just a little bit of paint. Get the little bit of paint that you need in the palette. That's kind of like a yellow ochre, raw sienna kind of color if you're used to some of those colors. I know sometimes many of you are painting with regular um, tube paints, and you, so I'm just going to mention that color too so you can kind of know that's a raw sienna right there. Again, this is a French ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, and then this is like a cerulean blue down here. So now we're starting to get into some beautiful warm and cools. Warms, cools. Always want to have both of those working in your paintings at all times. Um, you want to have some red. Let's do some red up top here. This is kind of like an alizarin crimson. Red. We want to have some beautiful red colors. That red um, color looks really nice with um, skies. And also, um, let's go with... Um, I think I'm going to mix in a little bit of green over here in my blue area. I'm going to mix a little bit of green and just kind of keep it separate over there on this side over here, if you can see, like that. And then I also need some orange and red over here. And some green too as well, orange, red, and green, brown. 
I'm going to make like a brownish red. Orange. And that'll be for the um, some of the foundation of the lighthouse and some of the rocks and things. So we're going to have, again, some really nice washes here. Now, we said these are going to be lighter washes, so we didn't use a lot of thick paint. We didn't really, really get a lot of thick paint here. We just used a little bit of that paint mixed with water, so we have more of a lighter looking mix here. Now, what I'll do is I'll get my paints all prepped in my palette like we did here. Now we're all set. Now we're going to empty out the water because we just mixed all those colors. We will empty out the water and get fresh clean water. If you if you kind of uh, have a couple splashes or something that are on your paper, don't ever worry about that. When you're you always finish your painting all the way to the end. No matter what kind of splashes or smudges you get on your paper, whatever that is, don't worry about it. Right now we can kind of fix this a little bit. Add a little bit of water to these bits of paint we smudged on there. Add some water to it. And then just, that's all you had. That's it. Good enough. Now let's get that fresh clean water and wet the paper. Dampen the paper. Let's dampen the whole paper up like this. Fresh clean water on top of the whole paper. Don't drench it too much. Just dampen the paper up. Fresh clean water. The whole rectangle that we have here. Get it all on top there. Wet the whole paper. Just like that. Make sure it's good and covered with fresh clean water. And that's it. Let it sit there for a second or two. Now the fun begins. <laughs> We're going to have fun doing this. Let's start getting our warm and cool blues, greens. And here's where you don't want to spend too much time. You just want to get these light washes like we made here and just get them on the paper and let them mix and mingle. Kind of exit, X them across like this. Then you go in and you say, all right, I have a bunch of cool colors here. I have a bunch of blues and sort of green looking colors on there, right? And some purple. Ooh, look how good that looks. Mix all those colors together. Wow, look how good that looks. Okay, and then you go in and say, all right, let's get some warm in there. Get some of that raw sienna. And always remember, this is going to dry really light. It looks a little dark now, a little bit. You know, you're going to see all these colors, but once it kind of dries, it's going to be fine. We'll come up here, we'll get some of that red, alizarin crimson. A little bit of alizarin crimson here and there. Add some more water, fresh clean water if you want, in a few places if you want to dilute it down a little bit if you want. But I think, but you can't, the thing is now, I just want to mention this, we can't keep working and working and working. We have to kind of, at some point, I'll put a little bit of green in there too, a little bit of green down here. At some point, yet we just have to say, okay, that's good. We mixed enough, it's fine. And that's good. So you saw how much we worked these colors and these washes on. Not long. At most, what, two, three minutes? And that is it. Two, three minutes you work blending on the colors that we mixed all here in the palette. And then that is enough. We can't keep mixing because then it starts to dry, the paper, and then we'll make awkward looking smudges and things on the paper. So now it has to dry 100%. So that's the key right here with the glazing technique. Get that first wash on like we just did now. Get it on quick. Get your colors beautiful. All those beautiful colors. Mix them all around on the whole paper. But it's a real light wash you can kind of see, right? That's really light. That's hardly, there's like hardly any, there's no darks on here at all. It's all that really, really super light wash. You get it on, you let it be, 
You also use a blow dryer if you want to dry it off and, and keep working to get your darker washes on next. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just hit the stop button on my camera. You'll even hardly notice and we'll be back to work again in just a second. But I will take my blow dryer as I'm here in my studio and I will, again, blow dry this all off till it's 100% dry. The paper will become, again, really, really flat and uh, straight. Right now the paper is buckled like this. It looks like a... Um, kind of like a, a roller coaster because we have all that water on there. But once I dry this off with a blow dryer for a few minutes, maybe three, four minutes, it'll, the key is to get that paper looking flat again and straight. And then you go in and you do your darker washes on top of that. So that's what we're going to do next. We're just going to wait until this dries, or if you want, you can use the blow dryer, do it a little quicker and we'll get back to work again. All right, we're getting started again. I used the blow dryer and I actually um, got the paper here to pretty much be almost back to where it's perfectly flat. So that's how you kind of know it's dry. You can also, I always touch the paper just a little bit, but usually when it's not looking like that roller coaster, all buckled, you know it's good, it's pretty much good to go. I'll take off the, um, the uh, plastic off my, uh, my phone. So, what I wanted to kind of just show is that um, it's pretty simple to get all the, you know, facets of this uh, type of method um, going and completed, and uh, it's not really too difficult. I think that's going to take your artwork to a whole other level when you're using some plastic uh, film, as uh, Duralar. I, I I use the Duralar brand. There's other things you can probably find online, but it's zero. 04, 0 .004 thickness film, clear plastic film. And what's great about this is I just took it off the, the phone. So now um, I'll just take my phone. I'll get this back to, there we go. So now we have the, we have the lighthouse back. We, we just uh, took, took the plastic film off of the, off the phone. So now we have our plastic film and then what we can do is what I'll actually let me do this I don't want to have an issue with a, a problem let me see if I can find something here okay let me look around a second I apologize temporary uh, let me do this um, let's see here I'll just I'll use a piece of watercolor paper just like this and what we'll do is we'll take this and I'll show you how easy this is you take some uh, this is called a uh, goof off goof off um, pro strength uh, remover it takes off like glue adhesive tar uh, dried paint things like that so I'll just take this and I'm always careful with these type of things. I usually wear gloves, but I think I'll be okay. This has got a small spout on the top like this. And then all, we, all I need is a um, paper towel. So I take a paper towel and I take some of this goof off and I just trickle it, trickle it onto there. And you can just see how you can lift that right off. So you can, again, you can reuse your plastic film over and over again hundreds, thousands of times. And that's all we did. So now it's ready. Your, your plastic film is ready for another painting if you want. Clean off the Sharpie marker. I use red Sharpie marker um, on this one. Sometimes I use black, it depends. But red seemed to look, look better. It showed up better on the uh, video here. So that's really, that's it. Now, um, let's continue on here. Let us get started with the, um, the dark washes, so glazings. So now we're doing the darker glazings, and I think that's just really the next step is the darker washes. And uh, we'll just, we'll go in and we'll get our palette with a little bit of, we'll spritz a little bit of paint on there, uh, water on there. And we'll start making our darker washes. 
And then what I'll do is, um, right here I noticed there's a really nice looking um, uh, olive green, which is basically our greens mixed together with some brown or orange for our olive green there. And then um, we have some orange and red. Now here I'm going with that thicker paint, right? I'm not using a lot of water, just very little water. I'm kind of, I need more paints in my pan. I have to pick up another paint set soon. So I will do that very, very soon. But now I'm going to start getting my colors. We're looking for the um, orangey, brownish red foundation for our lighthouse. We're having that olivey green for the lighthouse. And then some browns too over here. Some browns and dark browns. We'll make some darker brown with some blue added to that. Like that. So we'll make some darker brown and orange colors with some blue added. And um, we might even use a touch of black. Maybe up here we'll use a touch of black. Okay, and then what else do we need? I think we could start with this pretty much. We have a pretty good range of colors here. More brown, maybe some more brown up here. Touch of green in the brown over on that side. So we kind of want to mix things up a little bit. All right, so let's get started. Let's get that olivey green right here, which we said was green and brown, or green and orange, or kind of a little bit of both. And we're painting into the light. I forgot to mention this, but the light is in front of us. So if you can imagine, the light is shining towards us. So we're now we're now looking at the, the, the sunlight. The sun itself is behind the clouds, and it's in front of us. So that's why you get that really dark kind of effect with the... Um, with the lighthouse and I'm going with the green that olivey green but it's thick paint can you see how that's kind of dark I'm not using much water it's mostly paint with a little bit of water and that's how we get our darker washes now as we go and I'm just gonna work my brush carefully you know you could take your brush and maybe just do simple strokes like this just vertical vertical strokes like this if you kind of if you're not used to maybe doing different kinds of fancy brush strokes or what have you, you can just do some just like this. Like that. Right across there. Then we have some of that reddish orange for the base of the, and brown, red, orange, and brown. That's the base of the lighthouse. Kind of blends down into the rocks. And then some more greens and browns and reds for the rocks. Let's not get too bogged down with too much. I'm doing some rocks over here. There's some more rocks along the bottom here on the water. It's darker down here. I rinse off my brush again and go back in and get some of those greens and browns. And again here, just have some fun. Have fun getting those rocks in. Rocks are usually sharp, angular, with some rounded edges too. So you can make some round shapes like that, some round shapes, circular, kind of like radius shapes, and then some sharp rock shapes like that. But mostly dark over here. And I try to mix up all the colors as we go. So 
some black. I always like to use that black along here. That looks pretty good along the along the water edge. I noticed that looks pretty good. Gives it a really good kind of like good strong line along the bottom. Okay, and there's some more rocks over here. All right, so you can kind of see how we have our island now. We did that island pretty pretty well, pretty pretty efficiently. Now we take some of that wash and let's do the just do this. That's simple. That's the reflection of the lighthouse. Maybe get a little bit of a darker, a little bit, a little bit of a darker spot or two of color within that. But that's all you need. And that's it. That tells the whole story. And then a little bit of bluish green, two like this. Get some bluish and green colors just to get some, get some blue and green and just do like the water is, right? The water's kind of choppy. So that's kind of how you want to make those brush strokes, just kind of choppy like this. Just back and forth like X strokes basically. Just choppy like the water is, choppy like that. Maybe splash a little bit of water on there too. Splash a little bit of fresh clean water on there. Oh, the water might be a little bit murky there, no big deal. I'll change out my water now. It's about time, it's good time now, change the water out, add some more um, fresh clean water. And then we're gonna continue on. Okay, we're gonna have some darker details as you can see with some black paint at the very end of the painting, we'll do those really fine details of the wrought iron catwalks and railings and the conical top of the lighthouse with that steel cone on the top and there's an antenna and a lightning rod and we'll do some more of these uh, rigging these uh, boat lifts over here on the left we'll do those with the darker black thick paint and we'll also introduce maybe uh, a needlepoint brush which has that really fine point can you see that really fine point that our needle needlepoint brush has so i always like to use the needlepoint brush in my paintings toward the end when I'm doing my very, 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 very fine details. If I have those details in my painting, like flower paintings or um, landscape paintings have a lots of details. So this needlepoint brush, I use it all the time. So we'll use that toward the end when we're doing our, again, more finer details uh, here in this painting, but still let's keep working. So we have, um, I think the, th the most, Let's see what we have. We have this distant shoreline back here. Can you see that? I put that in with my pencil line here. That's a distant shoreline back there. And we don't see it over here. So that's okay. So we don't have to worry. We have a distant shoreline over here and we have some land here. So there's some hills here, some green grass, and then we even have some purple type mountains and things in the back some some actual hills some purple hills which are in the far distance and that really makes this painting beautiful and we're gonna have some more purple hills back there like that all right so let's do the purple and the green let's do the purple first that would be this red here and a little bit of blue over here we have purple here, let's use that. Well, yeah, that looks good. Okay, let's get that in. Look how good that looks. So you add a little bit of that purple hills in the background that looks so good gives you that feeling of distance you can add a little bit of purple in the water too why not harmonize the whole painting with some purple everywhere you can even add some up into the sky I'd be really careful about adding 
washes to the sky because our sky came out so good. But let's add a little bit of purple in the sky and then we go in and just blot it up with the tissue a little bit. I'd even add a little bit of water to my tissue and just sort of blend that purple in like that. I would say leave the sky. Sometimes I experiment. Right now I'm experimenting and it's great to experiment. So you do the as much experimenting as you like. Um, but when you start to do experimentation, remember it can lead to problems. So I added that purple to the sky. I should have probably just left the sky as it was because it was a really beautiful wash. And now I've kind of made some unpleasant looking smudges and marks on my sky that I would have rather not had, but I did want to venture out and try something new. So always remember when you try something new, things can go wrong, but that's okay. Cause then you learn things and you say, Oh, next time I know I'm going to be a little more careful with adding things to my sky. Once my sky wash is completed, cause we got that sky wash completed on that first light wash. Does that make sense? But now you saw me, I kind of said, well, let's add some purple since we're adding purple to these uh, distant hills over here. Let me add some purple to the sky. But in actuality, I already had some in the wash a little bit in the sky. So we could have left it as it was. So always remember, there's nothing wrong with trying some experimental things. And don't worry, you're always working. All your, all your paintings are, are basically our practice. You're just, every time you're doing a painting, you're just practicing and that's your, your practice. Your, your painting is your practice and you just keep doing that over and over practicing, trying another one, starting another one, put the next one aside, start another one. You keep doing that and that's just all the processes and you just keep doing that week after week, month after month, and year after year. And by one, two, three years of doing that, you'll find that, wow, my paintings that I'm practicing on right now look way better than the first ones I started with like two, three years ago. And then you realize that it, all it is is just getting in there and just having fun and practicing and just getting in there and painting and having a good time and trying new things. Sometimes you try something new, it doesn't work, no big deal. You just finish your painting out, finish it all the way to the end and then set it aside. And if it didn't come out good, no big deal. You're just starting another one the next day or, you know, a week later, whatever. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, practicing what I preach and then I'm going to add some green here over here on this side like that and that's sort of like the green distant hill over here it kind of looks nice it's got some of that green and brown in there I'll add a little bit of brown mix in that green just to give it a little kind of a more mellow look to the green give it a little bit of trees and things on there by just kind of making some, you know, up kind of like those little lines there on the top. little bit of green over here too. All right. We can start working on our fine details now. I'll use my uh, needlepoint brush. I'll use some of that black. But what I want to do is when I use that black color, I want to, you know, not make it as I'll add a little bit of blue and red to it maybe a little bit of orange blue and red just to kind of give it some more interesting look as far as the dark color is dark it's almost black but it's not quite fully black because I added those few extra colors a little bit of orange a little bit of blue and this way it's not looking so like, uh, you know, just jet black. We have a little bit of color to it and there we go. I'm just going to start doing the details here. We have the catwalk over here 
and this is all that black wrought iron steel that's at the top of the the lighthouse. And I wouldn't worry too much about every detail about it, just kind of get it in there. But not much water at all, it's mostly just paint. And there's some more wrought iron supports that are underneath the catwalks. There we go. And there's the other bit there. And then we're going to do our beautiful conical top. We'll create our lightning rod over here. We have an antennae here. We have the underside of the conical rooftop of the lighthouse. We have the light itself in there, like that. There's a few windows on the lighthouse over here. I'll just put a few windows with some dark paint. We can add a little bit of light paint to these windows if we want. We'll, we'll try that. Again, the same thing. Let's get the roof on here. So essentially right now what we're doing is just adding in all those really beautiful dark black wrought iron steel uh, members that are around the lighthouse, which are the uh, roofs, canopies. There's a little more. And you can kind of see how it's coming together. Now the only issue I think I might have had here, and I will admit this is a problem that I, I forgot to catch before I finished my painting, and this is something where you can kind of please make a note of this so that, you know, you kind of be aware of this, but I left my crosshairs in my painting. Those original red uh, crosshairs that we put here on the, on the actual photograph I left them in my painting. So really what you, the best way to go about it is once you have your drawing all completed 100%, then you'd erase those cross lines that we have here. Cause you wouldn't want to leave those in your painting, obviously. So you do see that it is here in my painting. It's pretty visible. We'll zoom in just a little bit so we can kind of see. You can kind of see these, how I left these in. I didn't mean to do that, but we're, I get so caught up in having fun here and doing the video and working with you all that I, I, I lose track of what I'm doing sometimes. I apologize. So that's kind of what I'm saying is before you start your painting, then you erase that, that first original crosshair lines that you um, created. That's all. That, that'll be a really big help. Uh, so, all right, that's just that. One tidbit of information, that's going to be really good. All right, this here, let's just do our final remaining. This is our hoist for boats and rigging and things. We're going to do our, um, we're going to do our, flagpole here. And uh, this is really coming along beautifully. Wow, I think we're almost... that we got a little bit of a ramp going down there off the uh, foundation of the uh, lighthouse we have a, a doorway in here like that for the lighthouse um, we're gonna make maybe a figure or two 
There might be some other uh, rigging over here too we're going to put in. And some steel support structures over here for the boat. Boat lift over here. And I think what else can we do? Let's finish up our final details here. So let's do some red and uh, blue. Some black will work fine for the blue. Okay. Then we're just going to do our beautiful American flag here that a little bit of orange paint there for the light a little bit of purple under here and then maybe we'll get some We'll have a couple of workers over here. I'll put some yellow, some yellow um, rain suits. So we have some sailors and some workers along the along the lighthouse. They're working. And then what else do we need here? I think what else do we have? Well, that looks pretty good. I think we actually have completed everything. Um, maybe we should try anyway to add a few lights. Um, I would use uh, titanium white in a tube. So titanium white in a tube, a little bit of orange or yellow ochre. Any kind of yellow or orange is fine. Just to make the color at the top of the paint of the tube a little bit warmer. You want to have a warmer light looking color. So the you know light is usually warm. And then we'll just add a little bit of that to the... like that. Just a few spots there to the lighthouse and then to kind of mellow it out a little bit, we take a tissue and just blot it. And maybe go back in too and just one more time. Like that. Looks good. Maybe a couple highlights across here. Can't hurt to add a few little highlights there on the uh, top of the steel structures. And there's a little bit on top there. Maybe on top of the uh, lighthouse, we have a little bit of light there. But there, maybe a few spots here. Thing, the thing is, when you add a little bit of that titanium white with a little bit of orange or yellow, uh, use it very sparingly, please. Please use it sparing, sparingly. Don't, don't feel like you have to add it many places. Just a few spots, not many at all, and that's all you need. And that really will kind of really add some zip and zest to your painting. But you don't want to do too many places. And I'm putting it here in the front of the lighthouse. Probably it should go on the areas where there's the light over here. And then over here it shouldn't be so much. Because we said the light's coming from behind the lighthouse this way. So the light, if any place, it could be bouncing around a little bit on some things here and there. But I would say it would tend to be on the areas that are where the light is. So the light is actually over here. 
and over here and over here a little bit and up here is fine and of course on the tops of these rocks you can add a little bit of light but I think we are complete we have a beautiful lighthouse completed we saw how you can use your uh, grid patterns with your uh, plastic film over the top of your subject matter whether it's a, a, a picture from a book you know you could uh, I have a new book out I'm hoping you're going to check out my new book in the comments section below in the comments below you'll see my new book you can watch and see on YouTube I have a video it shows you each page of my new book I'm hoping you're going to pick up my new book there's tons of great there's literally just you know loads of beautiful paintings you can paint those paintings that I've